the Wheelie Podcast. Let your iPod bloom. Okay, dear florists and Nicole, I'd like you to tell me about your trip to Cornwall because I know that lots and lots of our flowers come from Cornwall because, well, the season is earlier, it's a traditional flower growing area. Definitely. And I know that you set off in the Wiggly Skoda. We did, which was an experience in itself. That's a good car, that is. It is very good. Well, it got us there and back, <laughs> yes, so just good start. Just yeah. there were a few knocks and incidences, shall we call them? But yeah, it was all right. You, you were sick. Weren't you? Yeah, I was yeah. quite poorly. Yeah, that travel that. sick. Yeah, from yeah. Simmons horrendously Yats. from Simmons Yats all the flipping way there. And I thought, and that all you... the way back, and all the way back. But I did have fabulous sickness bands mm. that helped, so they were their top tip, their dear listener. Top tip, top mm. tip. Mm. And I, I booked you into a public house, hoping that you would partake of the beverage, etc. But you got there too late. We did. Mm. Yes. To a double bed and a single bed for three of us. Which I said was fine, but my friend Emily did wish not to share a bed with me. Well, due to sicky Sue, I suppose, from the car, nobody really wanted to share with me, did they? So, so um, you fixed it. We did. we did. Okay, so you went to see James at Clone's Flowers, oh. who's a wonderful wholesaler and he grows his flowers down in Cornwall. Yes. It was lovely, and they do floristry, and they're the most nicest people you could wish to meet. Oh, it was lovely. They it was were like lovely. being part of the family for the day, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. So what did you do, Emily? First of all, we went round all the greenhouses to see what James grows himself, and we first saw the Christmas croissants that we're going to be getting. What were they like? They were very tiny. <laughs> <laughs> And then we saw cornflowers that he'd grown. But is he never... experienced in this? Have they, have they, is oh, it, yes. Has he been doing it for some Very. time? His granddad started it, oh. and then his dad, and now he's just taken over. And our dahlias that we have and we send out, we went to see those, and that they were taller than me. Really? And yeah, they were massive. They were absolutely beautiful. While we were there, we also saw them doing some wedding floristry. I was going out for that weekend. Oh, they were so quick. It was unbelievable, weren't they? They were amazing. Excellent. So hopefully you've picked up a few tips about how to speed up. quicker, yeah. yeah. Listen, the flower industry in Cornwall's been through really tough times, and I think some of his inspirations come from us. Yeah. Tell us about what they've been through down there. Well, we went to see a man called Clive, very nice. And it's he's through a generation, and he is struggling to make a living down there. Why? Know, is, a lot of it's to do with obviously they had a very bad winter. It's so much now cost to heat your home, never mind to grow flowers. And it's cheaper to get from places like Holland. Mm. But we don't want places like Holland, no. do we? But also, some of the florists refuse to pay many for what to really nice flowers and I think I'd rather us pay a little bit more and have an it's English great, flower yeah. myself. And they're glad to, to have us. Oh, they were wonderful, all of them. Oh. But then the Cornish people are very nice, mm. aren't they? Except so, yeah. the one that took my Vitesse and took it to bits, yeah. left it in a heap and then went bankrupt. He is not a nice Cornish person. No. But all the rest are lovely, aren't they? <laughs> and they had... make the best ice cream except for Ralston Court, obviously. We had Cornish pasties in their kitchen with the family and strawberries and cottage cream and all meringues and it was absolutely lovely. It was the most Don't horrendous the day. Cider. Oh, and the cider. Oh, oh I yes. knew it. And the cider. You girlies. It was a horrendous day when we got there. It rained and rained and rained. Did it change your opinion of us using British flowers? Because I know... That yeah. in this floristry, we've had various moments of temptation with different mm. people coming in and out and saying, oh, but we could have these lilies, or we could have these exotic flowers. Mm. Just imagine if we could mm. do, what's that uh, paradise bird? Bird of paradise. Bird of paradise. Mm. And every time we've said, no, no, no. Did it change your well, view? Well, it did me, because I've been in it a long time, and we've always used... Some English, but a lot of foreign. And now seeing them struggling, we must have all our flowers from English growers. Not just Cornwall, there's Lincolnshire all over. Definitely. What do you think, Emily? 
I just love the way that you can go out and pick them like as if you picked them out of your grand's garden. It just yeah. reminds me of when I was little. And you were inspired to become more involved in the florist. Yeah, I was. Nicole. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to do a bit more down here. It'd be very nice. Tell us about this machine that you saw. James showed us a machine that apparently his granddad set up when he built the nursery. A bunching machine that I don't think any of us had seen before. He showed us how to bunch dahlias and sleeve them. Which and it strips quite the leaves definitely yeah. as well. You sort of strip the leaves off and you end up with a nice bunch because it's got a thing to tie in. It was amazing, really. You cut them all to one length and everything, didn't it? Yeah. It did everything. It was fantastic. Mm. Amazing. Did you see lots of other flower farms or has it generally died out down there? I think there's a lot of tiny ones that perhaps have got one greenhouse that specialise in one thing that James gets the flowers off for us. But also big down there are daffodil bulbs. Ah. And we bought a sample back and they're absolutely beautiful. So hopefully we may be selling them. But if we don't, you must buy Cornish Cornish bulbs bulbs. if possible. Not Dutch ones. Sorry, Dutch people. But the thing is, it's just that if we can source them in Britain, it means that our fields will be full of daffodils, which is lovely. Not only that, it's all going to die out in this country. And we need to keep our English flowers growing. Mm. And he contacted us because he saw us on the telly, wasn't he? That's right, yeah, he said he'd seen you on the telly. And we're now one of his biggest customers, which is lovely. Fantastic. Mm. And for us, it means that we can buy direct from the farmers themselves. And we don't grow as many um, flowers as we could, as we should. Um, we've got lovely sunflowers. We've which just got amazing. those right now, haven't we? Oh, yeah, they're all coming fabulous. into bloom. So if you want to see our sunflowers, if you could fly over in a helicopter over Preston on Wye, just by the church, you'll see them all there. If you haven't got a helicopter, you can go onto our Facebook group and see a photo. But, I mean, it'd be better if you were in a helicopter. Oh, yeah, we will wave if we see it. Absolutely, and if you do a low-flying bit over the church, Mm -hmm. there is a small airport just by... There um, is. ...that you can fly into if you want to in your microlight. In fact, they had a small crash there the other week. Did they? Yes, yes, they came down, Monty was there, and uh, he saw the guy waving like this. That's a panicked wave. (laughs) So they waved back thinking he was being friendly, Mm. but actually what he was saying was it was a bit windy and it was a crosswind. So he turned the microlight round and landed it across the runway. Mm. You know, it's always a cross in the middle of the field and unfortunately lost control and hit the hedge tipped it up and oh. they all went running and it was fine oh. and oh. also if you're paddling your canoe down the river you can see our beautiful sun then if you're paddling a canoe down the river at Preston on White yeah. if you look right, right you will see our sunflowers mm. don't steal anyone any of them good luck Alan's more church we've just given them some mm-hmm. well done Rose uh, anything else from you, dear florists? No, that's no. It. I should have said it was a training day, wasn't it? Was it? <laughs> or was it, it was a, a cider day? day. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. What was it's... the name of the cider? Oh, I forgot. Thatcher's. I know him. That's... Martin Thatcher is a Nuffield, Rattler and he started cider. that little business. Oh. Rattler cider is the word. Thatcher's Rattlers. Mm. I thought you were into vodka. I am. Yes. Have you tried Chase? Vodka. No. Where's that from? It's from Herefordshire. Oh. And it's now got the world's best taste test for vodka. And it's in Sainsbury's at £29 a bottle. Oh, and we'll have to taste it then, won't we? We interrupt this broadcast to bring you hot news from the Wiggly office. We're just going to all gather round because we've got a letter from the Queen. Hang on. OK, so you know on the uh, shows, like Strictly, they keep you hanging on, don't they, for ages. So while we are getting the uh, knife to open the letter... Let's have a few guesses as to what it is. Mine is, it's a personal invitation to have tea with the Queen at Blake Mia. I'm lost for words at that thought. I think it'll be Prince Philip looking for half-price wormery. (laughs) Sam, 
I think it's to do with the great British menu and the banquet that they have. Oh, Tanya? I think it's an invite to a smashing party. A smashing party? Like with plate smashing. Um, I don't have an idea of my own, so I'm going to jump on the bandwagon with lovely Tanya there. A smashing party. <laughs> now, you know what happens next? We still don't know, Nick, because Karen's still to come. Wait for it, dear listener. Tensions rising. Farmer Phil, what do you think it is? Well, I've revised my idea a bit because I think that now that Prince Philip's got a spare royal crest because Mohammed Al Fayed burnt his, that he's perhaps written to you to say he'd like to buy a half price wormery and you can have a royal crest. A royal crest, oh yeah. Ooh. Mrs. Dow, what do you think it is? From the Queen. I know what I know what this is. Yes. She's heard about your driving and it's actually a carriage driving competition to try and slow you down with a donkey we did have a small incident on the trip to the tree man didn't we we did yeah it involved me reaching for my imaginary brake pedal and putting my hand over my eyes and leaning back in the seat (laughs) unfortunately at that point she turned to me and went oh (laughs) so I still didn't brake I just turned to look at her and said what's the matter Mrs Dow (laughs) Anyway, we've kept you hanging on for long enough. Here comes Nicole, Mrs Dowell, Tanya, Sam and Farmer Phil for the opening of the ER, the Queen, Buckingham Palace envelope. Team. I think she's now just sliced the contents of the envelope into three pieces. <clears throat> Who'd like to read it? I think we need Sunday posh. Is it down? Oh no, that has to be the master of the household. Okay. Here we are. Farmer Phil, I feel. The master of the household has received Her Majesty's command to invite Ms. Heather Goring <laughs> to a reception to be given at Windsor Castle <laughs> by the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh for those involved in rural communities in the United Kingdom on Wednesday the 17th of November 2010 at 6pm. Isn't that when you're in Australia? No, that's no, when I've got a got dental a appointment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's OK, I'll reschedule. And here's a map and an entry card. It says you've got to wear a lounge suit. Does it? <laughs> or a day dress? Oh, bless, and she's got a sticker with SP. Is that for special, special? person? <laughs> <This> short person. <laughs> Where does it's, one wear SP? Well, it says moisten, moisten the, the side. side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we are. Oh, that's the map to Windsor. Well, I'll be. Thank you, Stuart Burgess, who must have fixed that for me. Would that be the rural communities? Commission for Rural Communities that I did a talk for? I don't know. Don't know. Anyway, thanks guys, how exciting! (laughs) Don't forget to reply. No. That'll be down to you then, (laughs) Sam. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. Your (laughs) Majesty is actually the correct (laughs) term. Your Majesty. If we'd all like to practice a curtsy. (laughs) (laughs) Nicole's wins hands down. I think she may have laid an egg, actually. It can plunder about on tiptoes and things. How can you have a pirouette? I can't do pirouettes anymore. I can stand right on the ends of my toes, though. She can. Ready then? Give her a pint and a half a side and I expect she'd do a pirouette. Yeah, this will be nice for people listening, (laughs) won't it? (laughs) Listen to me balancing on the ends of my toes. There's a lot of preparation. (gasps) It's just like something straight out of fame. I tell you what, you try and do that back up here. Thank you very much, Nicole. We will be with you next week where, no doubt, Miss Rachel will have sent in some Gambia reports. If she sent one in this week, then it'll occur now. Nope, there wasn't one. There we are, Farmer Phil, for another day. What's in Farmer Phil's diary for today? We're going to combine a bit more wheat today. Again? Yeah, but we're in the last variety now. We've just got 50 acres of wheat and then the peas to do. And what will the moisture be on the wheat today? It should be quite possible. I would hope that it was, you know, 17, 16 maybe. And would I be fair in saying that now we've got to the point where you don't really care what the moisture is for two reasons. One, the harvest has to finish, so you're going to get the darn stuff in. 
and two, the price is high enough for you to afford to dry it a little bit. By the way, Ricky has been a florist for years and years. So where she says she's used foreign flowers, that is obviously uh, when she was working somewhere else, not at Wigglis.